Welcome, everyone, to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. We have a great show this week. Mike Tirico, the voice of Sunday Night Football on NBC, joins me, followed by my buddy Sal Licata, as he does every week for our Train of Thoughts segment. Uh, before we get to Tirico, I'm going to do something a little different. Usually I get right into the interview, but obviously there was a story this week, big story that everyone sort of um, saw. I don't know if they read this story, but they saw the headlines about SI and AI and content and SI using AI. And I had a lot of tweets from people asking me if I was going to address it, telling me they wanted me to address it. I'll be honest, 100%, I don't want to address this because for one reason, I sort of feel like everyone has their minds made up and whatever I say, no one's going to listen to anyway. So like, what's the point? But people want me to address it. I think some people want me to address it because they want to like hear me bash my company and that's not going to happen. So if you're expecting that, don't hold your breath. Um, but there is some there is some nuance to this story. So if you want to hear the nuance, I'm going to give you how I feel and tell you what the truth is. Like I said, I think most of you probably have made up your mind based on just the inflammatory headlines. But this is my take. My bosses did not tell me to say this. They didn't ask me to say this. This is just what I want to say about this. So the narrative that Sports Illustrated, SI.com, website, magazine, has used AI to write editorial comment is completely not true on any level whatsoever. There has never been a piece of editorial content on SI.com or Sports Illustrated written by AI. We are not using AI to write about Patrick Mahomes, the NFL playoffs, the college football play. That's not happening. From what I know, SI had some deal with some other company to do product reviews or some e-commerce stuff. Now, again, I'm going to be honest here. I know nothing about e-commerce and product reviews and any of that stuff. I write a daily column, cover media. I write about nonsense, pop culture, the lightest side of sports, and I do this podcast and appreciate you guys listening every week. I try to have a lot of fun with it all. I don't know the business side, which is a detriment because I should know more about the business side, but I don't know anything about e-commerce and any of that stuff because it has nothing to do with sports. It has nothing to do with how we cover things. It has nothing to do with what we cover. It's a side thing that I guess all websites do, whatever. So what is in question is the content about the product reviews for this e-commerce stuff. Now, because of the way, you know, everyone wants to just say Sports Illustrated's using AI, Sports Illustrated, again, never once has Sports Illustrated used AI for editorial content, for any sports stories, anything you see on SI.com that covers the world of sports, none of it. Now, some of you are going to say, I don't believe you. Some of you are going to say, who cares? What's the difference? I'm just telling you, that's what's going on. And what I want to convey is that SI has never used AI for editorial content. That's it. Don't really care about anything else. All right. Let's get to Mike Tirico, followed by Train of Thoughts. All right. Joining me now, happy to have him back. Annual visit during the NFL season, the voice of Sunday Night Football on NBC. Also has a Peacock game this year, which we'll discuss. Mike Tarico. Mike, how are you? Hey, Jimmy. What's going on? Oh, not too much. Quiet week here in Sports Illustrated yeah. land. <laughs> I know. I I, 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 I can't confirm, confirm your authenticity. So this is yeah. actually you and you're actually talking to me. So that's good. It's all me. <laughs> crazy week for us busy week for you you had two yeah. games you had the uh thanksgiving yeah. niners seahawks and then sunday night chargers and ravens how, how is that when you got to go back to back like that for a play-by-play -play guy um it you know we've, i've done it a bunch i've done worse back-to-backs before um it's it's a challenge but if you can get ahead it's okay it, it's kind of the cumulative effect right you, you've been going every week and you know you never have a home game you're always on the road um, so it's three games in eight days and it's all out West and you know, your family's coming home and everybody's getting together for Thanksgiving, except you're the person on the road. So there's, there's that human toll to it as well as the professional toll, but you know, we are, it, it, it's, 
it's pretty easy to do because the job is not manual labor, but you just, you're traveling, you get to a new place, you crank out a new team that you haven't had all year in Seattle and you want to do the best possible job. And, you know, you, you want to take what usually you kind of condition yourself preparation wise for the six day ramp up to the game and then another six day ramp up to the game and you cut it in half. So when you cut anything in half, your workload doubles. So yeah. it's, uh, it's fine. I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy being on Thanksgiving. I did probably eight or nine Thanksgivings at ESPN doing college football. And now I've done a whole bunch of Thanksgivings at NBC, um, th- these two, and then a couple before that when Alan Chris had Thanksgiving off. Uh, so I've gotten used to that. And then I did a whole bunch of Christmas days from 03 all the way through you know, 16 or 17 with the NBA and a few more NFL. So uh, I'm, I'm used to that. And then there is kind of an honor to be part of the holidays and people have you on at home with their families. And I, I do enjoy that part of it, it's a balance for missing out on being home with my family. Right. You, you you have the two games Thursday, Sunday, it's Thanksgiving. You guys are so used to the travel, but is that a harder travel week? Because it's the, it is getting to those two games a little more of a pain in the neck because it is the busiest travel <laughs> holiday of the, of the year? You know, Thanksgiving night's not that busy. A lot, not a lot of people are leaving Thanksgiving night to be somewhere on Friday, right? And our fortunate break was we're on the West Coast. So it was just a quick pop uh, from L.A. to Seattle, from Seattle to L.A., excuse me. Uh, so so that, that makes it a little bit easier. And then you get in and see a team in the Chargers that we've had already during the season. Look, that's where the Sunday night schedule or uh, what Jim and Tony have or um, Kevin and Greg and uh, you know, on the primetime games. Now, uh, Joe and Troy having a little bit more on Monday nights. That always makes it a little bit easier when you see teams for the second and third time. And you know, Ian and Charles Davis probably have it a little bit as well in the CBS package where they see a bunch of AFC North teams. It feels like a lot. Uh, that that I, second I, third time. Ian's, Ian's done the Steelers three weeks in a row. I thought so. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought so. Three weeks. Actually, this, yeah. this may be the longest stretch we haven't caught up. because We usually catch up every couple of weeks during the season. But uh, it feels yeah. like I've watched him do – a lot of Steelers games. Yeah, it, it's it's a part of it, but it helps when you have a repeat customer because you know the nuances of the season. And usually, when you do a game, you follow closely the next week. Like we had the Vikings two weeks ago in Denver, so when I watch the Monday night game, you're almost watching a little bit closer with a little more interest uh, in what happens, what plays out, and after all the stuff that you had researched and discussed the week before. So when you get a repeat customer, uh, it, it becomes a, a week that you can, you can kind of dive even deeper and it becomes an enjoyable week to do the, uh, even more enjoyable week to do the game. Speaking of travel and Ian, I had him on this podcast two weeks ago and I asked him a question. I'm going to ask you, have you ever come close to missing a game? Yeah. I heard that with Ian. I had not heard, I've heard most of his stories. I did not yeah. hear uh, the uh, the sort of Spinarco was with him for that one, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I I had not heard that. No, I uh, I knock on wood have not. And I had, I'll tell you the closest I came, and it wasn't that bad at all. It was I was doing ABC College Football and ESPN College Football in the mid two thousands, and I did an ESPN game on Thursday night, then did an ABC game on Saturday afternoon. It was Michigan Michigan State. It was a one of the best Michigan Michigan State games in the series was a triple overtime game in Ann Arbor. Big comeback by the Wolverines. Braylon Edwards caught three touchdowns. Michigan rallied to win, and that's my hometown, Ann Arbor. Right. I couldn't get to the airport to make my flight to do golf on ABC on Sunday in Carolina. So I ended up going back to my house, which was the fortunate part. Got on a six or seven a.m. Flew to Charlotte. Did the uh, to Greensboro? Excuse me. Flew to Greensboro. Did the golf tournament. Went from the airport to the golf tournament. Went to look at the holes. Called the three hours on ABC. Right back to the airport. Back home Sunday night. So it was a it was a true eighteen hour trip to do the final round of that golf tournament. But that was the only. That was about as close as I've come to missing a game because um, not doing the Nets or any local team. Right. Rarely are your network assignments stacked back to back. And if they are, usually the company will make sure that there's private travel to get you to the next one. If you're yeah. doing a back to back in those 24 hours. Yeah. But back in those ESPN days, you're doing a lot of college 
basketball, NBA, college football. Like, so I, that's why I thought maybe in that. Yeah. So, so did you, you? So it was because the game went to triple overtime that you couldn't. Got that, it. Okay. They had no shot, no shot at making like an eight thirty or something to Charlotte right. and drive to Greensboro or whatever that was. So I remember coming out of the big house and going down the street, and you know I live in the area, so I know the back streets to get there, and every possible angle was cut off. And at some point, I was fifteen minutes in the flight and twenty five miles away. Like, like we had no shot, so I just kind of went back home and turned around and did the golf tournament in a uh, in a no no night in the hotel golf. Term. It was it was a weird time because nobody was broadcasting the fall PGA Tour events at that point. So USA Network did Thursday through Saturday usually, and ABC aired like seven Sundays. So I had a stretch where I would do Thursday ESPN College with Herb Street and Corso, Saturday ABC College Football with Tim Brandt and Terry Bowden, and Susie Schuster, Rich Eisen's wife, was our sideline reporter for a couple of those years. And then Sunday, go do the PGA Tour event wherever that was and then uh and then go back to bristol to do the monday night studio show uh to wrap it up so that was the busiest stretch i had i had maybe like six weeks like that every fall for about three years how how was doing the games with herb street and corso i i wish i have a terrible memory it's a big problem (laughs) yeah and i wish i had more of a recollection of corso doing games i mean i know game day obviously i don't yeah some reason i don't have that those memories of him doing games how was that it was awesome oh my gosh it was it was so much fun in the prep and so much fun on air. And then the time spent during those couple of days was just priceless. I, I adore Lee. I, w- what a guy. You know, I, I was reflecting on this the other day because uh, I reached out to call Hubie Brown on Thanksgiving because he's, he's my guy. I, I love him. I, I had a chance to work with studio shows or games, Vital, Corso, Hubie. I mean, three – amazing people who continue to do quality work laid into their lives. Um, all coaches, all coaches with a great passion for teaching, all with distinct, distinct and distinguished personalities on the air. And, uh, and, and how lucky was I to get the chance at different points in the career to, to be a part of all that. So Corso was, Corso was a blast to do games with. So Mo Davenport was our executive. In the studio, Lee and Kirk really got their thing going after Kirk replaced Craig James on college game day. And they were on the road. So when they would go on the road to do the college football shows for game day on site with Fowler, I was the guy back in the studio doing highlights and the cut-ins and the pregames and the halftimes. And every once in a while, they'd stay back in studio. We'd all work together. And so we get to the Thursday night package as ESPN starting to grow. A lot of Virginia Tech games. Georgia Tech, Mountain West, Colorado State, BYU. Uh, the idea, Mo Davenport, our coordinating producer at the time, said, hey, how about, uh, how about you do the games with Corso and Herb Street? And our sideline reporter was Dr. Jerry Punch. Mm. And we had maybe three years together, four years. I forget exactly what it was, late 90s, early 2000s. But, oh, my gosh, we had an absolute blast. And it was kind of get in Wednesday, kind of speed meet both teams, uh, do the game on Thursday, and then Thursday night or Friday morning at 4 or 5 a.m., it was escape, Doc Punch to a NASCAR race or to his Saturday game, me to my Saturday game, Corso and Herb Street to game day. Uh, man, it was uh, it was a great time. And Lee brought that same Corso showmanship personality. You know, he'd, he'd make some coaching points throughout the game. As a coach, you do this. And uh, that was great. But the time sitting at dinner and talking to Lee and – um, all that fun stuff. I, I just thought it was Jimmy. This is right up your alley. The first football game I called for ESPN was the Florida Georgia High School All Star Game, and Corso was my analyst. It was in Daytona Beach, <laughs> and it was the day after the OJ chase. Oh wow! So I am sitting in not exactly a four star hotel in Daytona. Corso's across the hall or next door, I forget. And the OJ chase is going on during the Rockets Knicks game in the NBA yep. Finals, right? And it's mm. any of us who are around or have seen the 30 for 30, that was like an all time day, right? Anarchy. Anarchy. Oh my it, 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 that's one of my one of my favorite 30 for 30s because it was so yep. well done. The behind the yep. scenes of the NBC of the finals, all of that. Yep. Knock on my door. It's Corso. Do you believe this? 
and we sat in my room and we sat for about 20 minutes and watched the chase play out. Um, it was just an extraordinary day that I'll, I'll never forget, but I don't know. Where, was, where he, I got was he to doing, co- was he doing commentary throughout the no, chase? No, I think we were all just stunned. Like, Oh my yeah. gosh. Like you, you can't, can't believe what's going on. And, you know, Lee, obviously through his history of college football, when OJ had an impact in the sport and, couldn't figure out what was going on and Al Cowlings and all, all, all of right. that. So of all things, like, you know, you kind of remember your first game and I've done, you know, hundreds of football games now. The very first one I did on a network TV was a Florida, Georgia high school all-star game with Corso the in day Daytona after. that next day. And the quarterback for the team from Georgia was Heinz Ward. Was a quarterback. There was still a receiver. Okay. I got yeah. it. I was thinking in my head, I thought Charlie Ward for a second. Okay, Heinz Ward. No, 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 it was Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward was one of the – there were a bunch of guys who went on to play in the league in that game. It was one of those, like, I've got the chart buried somewhere in my house, and I came across it many years ago, and it was kind of of a wow for me. But I can't get past watching the OJ chase at Lee Corso. With Corso, yeah. I mean, like you said, those of us who remember it live, it was – I don't want to say it's it's a lighthearted thing that would now, but we do look at we say the chase, the chase, the chase. At the time, we yeah. thought OJ might shoot himself in the car. So what I think, you know, now we don't have that nervousness that we had when watching it live, and we could make a joke about it. But that night, you didn't know what he was going to do in that car at Al Cowling. So it wasn't like th- like now. I think if it happened today, people would be like laughing and frolicking. But, but back then, it was yeah. like he has a gun in the car. What the hell? But but the balance was the lives that were lost, right? right. Um, and, and the and the many emotions of what happened, who's involved, OJ's involvement. Oh my goodness, what does this mean? I mean, right. the icon that is that was OJ Simpson it is in some ways still because of the legacy. But you think about the football career, the NFL career, the two thousand yards, the. TV career, the Hertz commercials with OJ Simpson running through the airport. Remember those? I mean, th- th- there were so many things that OJ Simpson um, represented that you know, this was uh, this was a guy who had it all. It was kind of a hero of a football sense. Um, and to watch that all come crumbling down around a horrific crime on top of that, it just the, the feelings then were very different, as you said, with 30 years removed, removed from that. Yeah. And the decision by NBC to actually cut away from an NBA Finals game, I mean, right. that would that would be interesting to see how that would play today. Yeah, but uh, thankfully, let's hope um, we never see that again. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to get into you know w- it's week thirteen in the yeah. NFL, so this is when the real nerds who love the schedule stuff get really excited because <laughs> there's Saturday games. There's you got a game on Peacock. Um, in week 16, Bills, Chargers, you and Collinsworth will do that game. Correct. Pe- Peacock only. Do you, how are you looking week by week? This might get flexed. I wish we didn't have this game. This, you know, oh, if this team wins one more game, right. then this becomes a better game. Is this like a, a big, big thing for you during the week and monitoring the schedule week to week? I mean, yes, not not, a, not obsessively, but of course right. it's a big thing because it it impacts all the stuff like, you know, where are you going to be for Christmas or New Year's or when your kids come home from school, where are you going to be that weekend and are, are you near any family or, or that stuff? So the personal part of it, yes. Um, but, you know, the, the way the schedule lays out, we have next week Dallas and Philadelphia, which is a pretty big game. The following week, Baltimore, Jacksonville, potentially for the number one seed in the AFC. You know, who right. knows what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks? Of course, right. this week we have the the Chiefs and the Packers. And Let then me interrupt you. For, got, I want to interrupt you. So when when you see the Packers upset the Lions on Thanksgiving, are you doing right. a fist pump because you know you have them against KC? And now that game isn't the you know maybe maybe you thought it'd be a little bit of a dud. Now okay, the Packers are in it. This is good for us. Is that the you, mentality? You know, always root for your schedule. I'm not sitting right. here, you know, throwing a party for a win or a loss for anybody, right? right, right? right. And right. Um, but but by the same token, when your games get more interesting, that's that's a good thing, and especially one like that because you have a game that we're probably going to stay in no matter what, which is a Chiefs game with Patrick Mahomes, who's never played in Lambeau Field, right? Right, and given the cycle of the schedule, where unless it's the 17th game that gets added. 
Mahomes is only going to play there once every eight years. So maybe it's one of two games he'll ever play at Lambeau, uh, given the history of the place and the already great track record of Mahomes. You'd you love to be able to be a part of those and, and be there that night. Plus, you know, any of us who are old enough, Chiefs Packers, you say, you say those two words, you think of Super Bowl one. So that together, it's one of those unique yeah. and fun nights. Green Bay has only hosted Kansas City a half dozen times. Uh, so uh, so you, you knew that that game was probably going to stay no matter what. It just gets more intriguing when the Packers win a couple of games. But like the Packers were playing the Chargers two weeks ago at Lambeau. You know, a Charger win would have helped the next week, but a Packer win helps right. two weeks down the road. So you, right. like, like, like teams and your fantasy team, Sometimes all the emotions of each play get very conflicted. Every every win makes somebody happy, right? So right. it all ends up working out. But we've got uh, Dallas, Philly, and then the Jacksonville, Baltimore game, the Peacock game we talked about, and then we'll see what happens with Week 16, which for the moment is Green Bay, Minnesota, which three or four weeks ago looked like it could be nothing. Now it might be a game to see who makes the playoffs. It might be a de facto elimination game uh, for one or the other team. So. Who, who knows? I, I've learned in the couple of years here, all this time invested emotionally into what's the nerd swing in the schedule is, is wasted emotion. It's, it's going to play out. We're going to be somewhere. <laughs> well, I had Mike North on last week who mm -hmm. handles all the schedule stuff, and he did clear up something I thought was important about the NFL wants to use flex if there's basically two teams playing for nothing. If both right. teams are playing for nothing, it's not to get the best game in there. And I think that, I, you know, I had sort of a different, I would think you want the best game. Um, but it's really, like I said, he said, get two, if you have two teams, you know, that there's nothing there for. So it makes right. sense with that. I, I mean, I'm shocked. I, I feel like it's used way less than I would imagine. I think, Jimmy, a couple of things. One, that's that, that philosophy has become, apparent more apparent and because of the seventh wild card the seventh team in the playoffs the third wild card there are more teams still right. alive when you get to this mid late november early december window i my feelings on flex are i think it should be there for the fans i i i think it's you've asked people to commit in these national windows to games so I think they should get the best possible games there. And that's clearly understanding that, you know, given the contracts with CBS and Fox as well, that they should have good inventory in those windows. It's hard to spread it out when you have Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night, the 425 game, and then those other two windows. It's hard to spread out. Then you throw Black Friday in there, the Saturday games over the next few weeks uh, here and there. It becomes very hard to fill up. There's not enough good games to put in every window. So that's right. here's what I'd love to see the league do. I'd love to see them release the schedule in April or May, whatever that is, and do exactly what the Premier League does. Here are the games this week. We'll assign times and, in some cases, dates when we get closer. So on October 15th, we schedule times and dates for November 15th through the rest of the year, or maybe, on, maybe for weeks 11 through 14, and then on Thanksgiving Monday, we'll give you the times for the rest of the season. And maybe you've got to put a, a, a Thursday in there at the beginning of the year because that really screws up schedules. That, that's fine. But, you know, you could do a one-day slide, a Sunday to a Monday in mid to late October a lot easier and clean those up. I, I think when I look at, you know, I follow the Premier League uh, a bit, I want to say closely, but I love the fact that the, their fixtures – are set for the day and the weekend, rather, but the day and the time, so the big ones are in the biggest windows, get worked out at the end. I yeah. think that would behoove everyone, especially the fans. And the league is so good about being for the fans and delivering the best experience. We love when 25, 28, 30 million people come run into a TV for a game. I think you'd get more of that if you strategically did the scheduling. We do it on week 18, right? Yeah. Sunday night, we're waiting to go, okay, where are we going on Monday or where are we going next Sunday and all that? I think we could do it with special provisions for the Thursday and Monday games because of the logistics. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, I, I, said get, to, 
Yeah, I, I love it. I said I said to Mike North last week. I said schedule the first eight weeks with dates and times. Get let's see where everyone is, yep. and then the last eight weeks or nine weeks. I was get confused now. What how many? And <laughs> right. then then you can use your idea, have the schedule, and then pop in the teams at certain in certain slots. You know, college football basically does that. You know, CBS picks games that ESPN moves games around to get the best games in the best spots. So, I, you know, right. I, I, there's a way to do it. There's, there's definitely a way to do it. Yeah, it's definitely doable. doable. Yeah. Um, this is a ridiculous question because you've been doing this for so long at high levels. You did Monday Night Football. You do the Olympics. I, I've gotten the impression this year, and I could be totally wrong. And if I am, tell me that sure. you seem a little looser. You're having a, a little more fun in your second full year as the Sunday Night Football play-by-play guy. Is that am I not seeing that and I'm crazy or do you? think that's true now remember you're asking that question to a guy who was making shakes in the booth with john gruden several years ago right so right. We, we we've 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 done our share of that stuff i, I don't even mean i i don't i, I mean don't, in I, just you even your play-by-play of calling it just see you're one of these guys now i feel like i put it on and it feels big game and it feels like well, an event i appreciate i appreciate that yeah you know um i i, I think when you move to a different place there's an adjustment period and certainly doing games here and there on the NFL package and doing it with a variety of different partners. You know, I, I did games with Jason Garrett and Tony Dungy, uh, Rodney Harrison, Tony Dungy. I did some NFL network games with Kurt Warner. So for the, the five years that I wasn't doing a game every single week between Monday night and Sunday night, I, I definitely say I was kind of working with new producers, new analysts. You're just kind of, if you're if you're filling in, keeping the boat going, right, and don't be the guy to change the show. I, I'm a firm believer that football is about the analysts. The analysts are the stars. The play-by-play guys are there to facilitate the producer's vision along with the play-by-play guy and certainly help the analyst be the star. Uh, this is a star-driven medium to me, and those stars are always the ex-players and the ex-coaches because there are a lot of us who can tell you what, uh, I think there are very few people at an elite level like Chris who can tell you why it happened or what it means or what's coming next. So I, I've always felt like that's that's our role. And I would say year two with a producer in Rob Highland, who's great, who I'm with for all of our primetime Olympic shows. We did Notre Dame together, and he's done the Sunday night the last couple of years. So to be to be there with Rob, but we, we're on the same page. We're, we're dear friends, and that's easy. And Chris and Drew Esikoff, who is the director for Sunday night. Uh, they've been nothing but great with us as well. So of course, in year one, we're all figuring it out with Melissa Stark as well on the sideline. But I, I would say it's probably, okay, we've got it all figured out. We know what works together. So that maybe that lets you be a little bit more, I don't want to say relaxed, but have a little more fun and take a few pokes and shots and all that stuff. So yeah, if, if that's the way it's coming through, that's good to hear. Uh, I, I love it. I love Love working with Chris. Man, he works, Jimmy. I, I, I'll tell you, Chris, we get on a call. We do the game Sunday. We get on a call on Monday to start talking about the next opponent. And the brain's going. The curiosity's going. Uh, it, it's it's fun to know that I can throw anything at him that we haven't talked about. And he's going to have an opinion and a thought. It's going to be pretty smart and pretty well thought out. So um, if, if that's the way it's coming through the TV, then I, I guess you're hearing the truth because we are having a blast doing it for sure. I don't know how much you check social media, but your goal call of Zay Flowers celebration was a huge, huge hit with viewers. All I care about is that I got a, a, a reach out from Andres Cantor. It's, oh, his, it's his call. I, sh- I should have name checked him there, but things are going so fast at the end of the game. But Andres, Andres uh, I guess, retweeted and sent something out or reacted, I guess we call it now, and uh, and sent something out. I uh, I do love soccer. I got to cover two World Cups at, at ESPN and the Euros. My son played a bunch of high-level soccer through his high school days and traveled around the country doing it. Uh, so I've, I've just fallen in love with the sport. I'll watch – uh, as soon as we get at football season, I'll try to watch most every Chelsea match, uh, root for them and all that. So I love it. And I, I recognize quickly what Flowers was doing. And that's the first thing that came to mind. So knowing Andres a little bit uh, from being around our Olympic shoots and other things that we've done, it was uh, it was an easy one to pay homage to uh, one of the best. 
Can, can you believe there are people who don't like or don't want celebrations in the NFL? Like I, I'm extreme. Like I say, use props. You want to hide stuff in the right. goalposts? Go for it. Right. Take out right. iPhones. I don't do whatever. <laughs> entertain me. I'm here to be entertained. But right. I mean, some people don't want anything. I'm like, how could you see that Zay Flowers thing and not think this is tremendous? I think it's the league calling right now to say no <laughs> celebrations. <laughs> the, the celebration monitors. Yeah. You know, Jimmy, I, I agree. I, I love the celebrations. Yeah. Uh, especially the ones that are thought out, choreographed. I love seeing the panic on the head coach because the play clock resets and starts running, right? And it's like, we don't want to get a delay a game penalty. Our kicker's shaky. It's going to be a 38-yard extra point as part of it, right? Uh, there are teams now. It's two weeks in a row we've come across teams, whether it's a coach or a player, who have said, hey, you're in charge of coordinating the celebrations. We want our guys to celebrate their big moments and their big plays. Some of it is, well, it doesn't have to be look at me, but when the pandemic was going on and they had that camera at the back of the end zone for celebrations, right? Like selfie camera almost. Oh, and all yeah, the yeah, defensive yeah. guys started running down to those. That just made it mandatory that everyone becomes something yeah. like that. So it's good. I, I think the fun I don't, part is I don't like the running to the end. Like that's over like that's overdone now. We've seen oh, like just celebrate. You like celebrations, but but yeah, you celebrate need a certain area. Celebrate where you are. We don't need the the wasting of the 10 seconds to run to the other end. Of the, just stay where you are and do oh, your dance. And, and, you know, did you see, Come I just on. saw it before we started taping. Did you see this ridiculous Tyreek Hill story with the celebration from last week? The, the camera guy. And, they, uh, find the, they find the yeah. poor camera guy for giving him a phone. <laughs> Come on. I bet Tyreek Hill pays that fine. Uh, it's, uh, somehow, some way, I think the guy will be made whole. Maybe it's uh, somebody hires him. Uh, for more, more steady guy. work, but it, but 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 you know what? You, you you talk about the celebrations. The one thing I do like about it is guys are celebrating with their teammates. Yeah. Oh right? yeah, I like the chore the choreograph stuff. Like the, yeah, this is the best team game out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, every person needs to perform his job on a play to score a touchdown. So the celebrations together, where the old linemen are in it with the guy who scored. I the, the to me or the defensive guys bring them all together, take a picture, family portrait, yeah, uh, yeah. some Thanksgiving celebrations. Yeah. David Montgomery, the Lions, actually had a touchdown on Thanksgiving Day, and he looked like he was going into some sort of celebration. Where he pulled out the towel, he tied it around his neck, and he was going to do like a little Thanksgiving. But then he was ruled out of bounds at the two, right. and he knew it, and he quickly bailed on the celebration. Well, right? So those are the ones I love to get. Well, that's my other thing. Do you know how many times I've seen a defensive team? They all run down to the other end zone yeah. after a turnover, but then there's a flag and the dope's got to go back. That's why coming I don't, back, you know. Coming yeah, back, coming there's back. a flag. So there's a flag. There, it's it's an enjoy. This is fun, right? It, as much yeah. as we stress about our team or our fantasy team or any of that stuff, this is entertainment and the acceptable line for what is allowed has continued to increase. And and to me, that's good. It allows us to have fun. I'll tell you what, what the challenge is in the booth. Like you want to, you watch the guy score. You want to make sure you get the drive, the play, all that stuff. But now it's, it's almost like uh, charades. Like you've mm -hmm. got to get the answer to what the celebration is quickly right, to, right. to figure it out. So that right. I thought, um, gosh, we, we had a touchdown in our Sunday night game and I looked up for a second. I thought he was doing the Ray Lewis dance for the Chargers who scored against Baltimore. But I wasn't yeah. a thousand percent sure because we cut away. And then I, I mentioned it going to break and I asked our producers, I said, hey, Rob, can we can we see that again in break? And it was. And and we had that. We rolled in a little yeah. bit of Ray Lewis as well. So that's right. the it's the fun. It brings like the charades part of the uh, part of the entertainment portion of the show to the booth every game. When you watch a game. I don't know how much you're able to watch on Sunday afternoon. I'm sure you could probably watch the one o'clocks, but even Monday night, are you watching it as a play-by-play -play guy or are you watching it as an NFL fan or both? Depends on if we have the team coming up or not. And if we've had the team and may see them again, especially now you don't know who you're going to see in the playoffs. Uh, you, you're kind of watching for, of course you're watching the game, but you're watching for, the specifics, uh, okay, how often do they play these receivers? Oh, they use this formation. Oh, okay. 
Uh, what what would be the best way to tell the difference of Tyler Algier and BJ Bijan Robinson if you get a Falcons game? One's always wearing this or that. So you just kind of, for me at least, I'm trying to load up my mind with that stuff. That's usually if I'm watching a Thursday or a Monday game, um, or I'll try to watch a couple of the shortcuts, the cut down version of the games uh, yeah. on Monday or Tuesday if there's a team that I'm not that familiar with, just to just to catch up on what they're doing and what they're doing well in case. They come up in conversation. But on Sunday afternoon, I usually have the game that's on in our local market, wherever we are for Sunday night, on the TV in the hotel room. And then I've got Red Zone going on my iPad while I'm finishing up my notes. So I'm kind of watching I'm watching a lot and I'm really not taking it in. You know, you're not uh, yeah. sitting there doing a detailed watch. You just have the games on just to see what's going on because invariably – We'll mention during the game something that happened, and then when 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 Chris and I get up to the booth, uh, once we get to the stadium on Sunday, we'll have a quad box of the games up, and we'll be watching them usually without sound, uh, just to just to keep a pulse. Like we we'll certainly be watching Philly San Francisco in the booth on Sunday because we have Philly next week against Dallas, and that'll be a, a massive game no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Um, were you, uh, were you traveling or were you able to catch any of the black Friday game? Uh, we were in LA. I watched a little bit of it around our chargers meetings. I didn't get to see, like, I can't say I sat down and saw right. the game, but we kept checking in on it as we were going on and watched the, maybe the second half on my phone on the way back to the hotel in LA. Okay. The reason I asked this, cause I'm wondering if you're watching that as a play by play guy and you see the ridiculous, pick six off the Hail Mary. <laughs> and do you think, Ooh, Al got a good one to call. I wish I had that. That would have been, you know, do you go into that mode or you're just like, I can't, I can't believe this play. And you don't think about yourself. No, no, you, you, I hope, I don't know what yeah. everybody else says. I hope that yeah. everybody gets a bunch of great plays and they nail the call. I just, yeah, I want, I want to see everybody does our job, do it well. Uh, you you kind of, when you sit in that chair, you know that you've got, this much time to react and think and uh you hope that everybody puts a stem almost everyone i've met doing this job is is either a really good person or a good friend so i want to see them all uh do well in those in those moments i didn't think that maybe because it was the jets you know <laughs> i'm a former season ticket holder at shea stadium I'm spent, sorry uh, that. a good part of the weekends of my youth in section 11 in the upper deck at shea stadium so I've seen that, and I said it on the air Sunday night because Jason Garrett brought it up. I said that was an OTJ play. That's an only the Jets play. <laughs> I mean, we've seen yeah. thousands of those o over the years. It feels that way, yeah. and um, that 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 was the first thought that came to my mind. I didn't. We were watching live. Uh, we were meeting with the Chargers, and then as we got in the car, somebody said, "Did you see what happened?" And I looked at it and go, oh, "It's oh. only the Jets." It, right. It's. It's amazing that uh, one franchise has found a way over and over to be in those situations, and there they were again. Yeah, they were again. Um, yeah, that, I mean, it, the the Rogers injury too. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. that hurts you yeah, guys because you know that was everybody. That, it, Rogers and Burrow, the two that really, I think, because the Bengals, I think, have a, I think they have like three prime time games left. So they 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 have a couple for sure. I know they they've yeah. got Jacksonville um, on Monday night, and, and then also yeah. that hurts the league, right? Because yeah. the Bengals have become man. I, I want to watch them, right? Because of Burrow and how good he is, and how long can they keep Burrow and Chase and Higgins together, right? Nobody has two number one receivers and a star quarterback who's already been paid, and you can afford it and build the rest of your team. So that's one that I think hurts. All of us, not just now, but over over the next couple of years. And I was just enjoying watching Joe from the Super Bowl year, then last year, become that that guy. We've had him. I've had him in a playoff game each of the last two years, and just love he, that you had another one of those guys in the league that if you knew you had him in a game, you were going to have a good game. And this is a quarterback driven league, and right now, I think we're, I think we're seeing the quality of play not as good as it has been in part because of that upper middle class of quarterbacks not being there. Like you had Phillip Rivers and Matt Ryan, Eli Manning, you had those guys who weren't 
Brady or Manning, right, or Rodgers at the top of the top of the top. That's a great point. Those That's guys, great point. they gave you a game every week. You knew Philip yeah. Rivers was going to like fight in there and all that, and you'd have a game every week. And now we don't have that group of a five or six guys. That means five or six games aren't as good, yeah. right? That's so we're watching a lot of young quarterbacks try to get there, and we fast forward as a football society to he's no good two years, three years, we're moving on to somebody else, right? Yeah. So that I think that has hurt the overall lack of, man, that was a great game. There are a lot of, well, this is a close game, but it wasn't a great game. And that's because in the biggest moments, the guy with the ball in his hands every time doesn't make the plays that Manning and Rivers and Ryan and that ilk did almost every single week. That's a it's a really phenomenal point. Like you have your Mahomes, your Burrow, your Jalen Hurts, your Josh Allen and then it's that next group group that's yeah, I I because I you know, so much of it's blamed on the injuries, but it's not just the injuries. There are teams who are playing mediocre quarterbacks that don't have injury issues. It's I don't know I don't yeah, like know why guys who started answers. 150 175 games. Yeah. Uh you know, 200 in the case of Manning and Rivers and Mar- Ryan you know, they, they started and they started a bunch of playoff games. They got teams yeah. to playoffs. And if the years that they didn't, they were this far out, right? They yeah. were one or one or two out. And also, you know, you, you look at it right now, Jimmy, you think of the big cities. Neither New York team is relevant again. Washington, not relevant. Chicago, not relevant. These are the mega markets, yet the ratings continue to be really good it's it's the conundrum that the league is going to have to figure out at a executive and coaching level more quarterbacks are playing seven on seven there are more flag football leagues guys are throwing and catching younger than ever before and you watch college games and guys are throwing it all over the park and completing for a bunch of yardage and scores where are those guys in the nfl and is it because you have to adjust to the play comes in to your helmet and it's not signaled in. Uh, you're not getting up to center, clapping your hands, looking at the sideline, and then you get a bunch of hand signals like college ball, right? Where are those guys coming in and succeeding in the NFL? We're going to need that in the next few years, like a group of about eight or ten of them, because finding a quarterback continues to prove to be the hardest thing, and there's a real lack of patience. I'm excited to see Jordan Love this week. Because Jordan Love did the Green Bay plan, sat three years, didn't have a great start this year, but they've got a ton of rookies. And guess what? On Thanksgiving, you go, oh, Jordan Love looks pretty good. Maybe maybe that's the way to do it, and nobody's doing it anymore. I, I don't know what the answer is, but yeah. I think that's the big, big picture issue for the play on the field for the NFL over the next couple of years. I agree. I agree. I, th- I think where the NFL is lucky is I do think those top-tier quarterbacks – Mahomes, Burrow, Hurts, I'll even put Allen there. They're also mm-hmm, very yeah. likable. They're not just great on the field. They're all very, very likable. I mean, if you don't like Joe Burrow or Patrick Mahomes, I mean, right. uh, Jalen Hurts, I mean, they're likable players too. So I, that's why I think the Burrow injury is almost a double whammy. You miss him on the field. You miss his greatness. And he's he's a guy that's just so easy to like and root for and watch. So the Burrow There one, are many villains, was, right? Right, right. Not, right. not in that I, level. I agree with you. No, no, yeah. no. I, I, it's it's a good point. I agree with you that, and that comes through when you meet with these guys too. You know, yeah. there's a, there's a there's a polish and um, a, a quality about each of them. Maybe different qualities about each of them that you're like, oh, oh that guy does well. People often ask, well, who do you root for? Mm-hmm. I I tend to root for the people who are really good, who right. work hard, right? The the guys who are the first in, last out have put the time time to task to grow their ability. Uh, the guys who you watch come in the league and grow as leaders, and you meet with them two, three times a year for four, five, six, seven years, and you're like, man, it's been fun to see. And that's just what I what I, what appeals to me. I, I like to see the coaches and the players who are like that. It doesn't mean you're standing there with pom-poms in front of the TV saying, I hope you win, but – you, you walk out of the stadium and say, you know what, good, good for that guy because he did it the right way and yeah. it, it kind of shows in the results. Right. It's, you know, it's, I cover this, I'm in it. So um, my mentality, I, I'm just, it blows my mind that people think that announcers are rooting for anything other than a close game, like, or even a good game, you know? I mean, it was, I, I thought it was great on Monday night when the game ended and Joe said, you know, 
that's it from Minnesota that, you know, the game's over and Troy goes, thankfully, you know, I, you guys just want a good game. Like that's, you know, I, I think, listen, you have meetings with players. You might like this player, this guy gives you, but overall you guys want a close game, a competitive game and not, you know, what we saw on Monday night or on Friday afternoon. Yeah. I started saying this, when I was calling the NBA and it carries over to the NFL as well. All I personally want out of every game is the ball is in the air. The clock says zero. And where it comes down decides who wins or loses. Then the three and a half hours we all invested together has been worth it. Uh, The, we are the announcer for the home team and the road team and the fan who doesn't care and the fantasy player and the better. So you well, can't appeal to each person along the way uh, at the same time, but at different points during the game, understand who's watching. When a guy's getting close to 100 yards, you know, shout it out uh, for that. Or, or the guy get the guy scores an octopus. He gets all eight points. He gets the touchdown of the two. Shout it out because the guy at home was a fantasy player who has that guy feels good about it. When the road team scores, get excited. When the home team scores, get excited and get out of the way of the crowd. Right, just. Try to hit every box along the way because that's our job as national announcers. I, I, uh, I'm jealous of Ian and Adam Amin and and those guys who get to do a local team as well. I've never called games for a local team, and I imagine that would be fun because then you know exactly who your audience is, and right. that that would be a blast that you're talking to the same group of fans that love the Detroit Tigers or love the Boston Celtics or whatever it might be. I'd like to see a little more catering to the better. That's my point. Of course you would. A it's not a surprise. <laughs> like, is is there anything I can do to get you to drop the nugget that unders are 29 and 9 in primetime games? Or would the <laughs> NFL have a fit if you said that on the air? Well, like would if you said that on the air, how fast does the league office call? I I, I doubt they'd call myself, but I'm sure they'd call somebody I know. Yeah. But you know, it, it it's always it's always it's always enjoyable to plant an Easter egg here and there. Right? Well, I just and, uh, like <laughs> I'm just saying, if the pregame show is going to be sponsored by DraftKings and Fanduel, and the yeah, pregame show is going right. to have the lines running across it, and you're going to have people picking games with a spread. Why can't Mike Tarico late in the fourth quarter say, "Oh, the score is 17-13, Just so you know, Chris, unders a twenty nine and nine in prime time this season. Yeah. Why I, I, why does the earth have to fall down if that happens? Right. I. I my guess is because the question becomes who regulates it? When do you stop talking about it? Once you open that door, how deep do you go into the house? Right? There's no, there's no just, door. There's no deep. Just drop that nugget. No other nugget. Just, just, just that, 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 yeah. that, that, just, that one nugget. Just that so, one. That's so all let I'm me ask you this, Jimmy. Given yeah. that, yeah. are you more likely to go under in a primetime game? Or do uh, you sit there and go, you know what? The world is round. It's got to come around somehow. No, I'm on unders big time this year. Are you? Yeah. Because lack uh, of yeah. quarterbacks. Exactly. Lack of quarterbacks. There you go. We've given, we've given, co- we've given, yeah. Let me ask you a college question quick. Because sure. I know you grew up in New York. You're wearing the Syracuse hat. You went to Syracuse. You currently live in Michigan. Michigan. Mm-hmm. Can you root for both teams or you only root for Syracuse? Are you rooting for the Wolver? I know in college people might have multiple teams. How do you, yeah. what's the uh what's the rooting interest? I, I I'm happy to see my family members who love the University of Michigan happy, and I know a bunch of people there. I also love a bunch of Spartans who I know really well. Tom Izzo is one of my favorite people on the planet. So Michigan, Michigan State. I, I'm happy for both. I'm the, I I root for one school, and that's Syracuse. That's okay. that's my alma mater. I'm still very involved at the school. Love the place. Uh, if there's anything outside of the success of of, uh, of our children that gives me more pride, um, it's watching the other Syracuse announcers do great on the air. Like um, watching Andrew Cat. Watching Catalan call the end of the uh, Houston game last week, right? Like no. Andrew is great. I was like so happy for him. Ian's obviously a you know, rock star, future Hall of Famer, sportscaster of the year kind of guy. On Saturdays, you sit there and you watch a game, and it's mm-hmm. Benetti and McDonough and Dave Pash, Beth Mowen's either doing a game on a Saturday or a Sunday, and all the way across the board, like that. That not just the football and the basketball program. But also all of all of our team, Kevin Brown doing a Syracuse LSU game last night, um, uh, Tuesday night 
on on ESPN two, right? Knowing that Kevin got to go back to campus and call a game at the dome as a pro sitting there at the table. And um, I texted him last night after the game. I, I love the fact that um, our team, that's our team, that everybody's out there crushing it and doing a great job. And on an NFL Sunday, you might go in your games, you may get Ian at one, you may get Catalan at four and you get me at eight. You might get Beth Mullins mm-hmm. if it's a full schedule and she's doing a game. And we, we have some weekends where there are 16 NFL broadcasts and four of them are folks who went to the same school and worked at the same college radio station. I take more pride in that professionally than maybe anything else I'm a part of. Okay. So what, what, Michigan plays Iowa, Ohio State. You're not there rooting and dying on every play. I am super happy that my family is loving Michigan winning, right? That that my in-laws and my father-in-law grew up <laughs> going to Michigan games for 60-some-odd years. He's in the stadium and having the time of his life with the rest of the family. I'm, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for the kids who I've met along the way and the people I know work at Michigan. But I'm, I'm not sitting watching the TV pounding in the table going, oh, my gosh, what's that call? You know, I, uh, that, there's one team I do that for, and that's Syracuse. And You're worried about who your next head coach is going to be. We got it. We got oh, Fran they, Brown. Okay. They, I, I Fran know Brown, okay. Georgia, Georgia DB coach. He's uh, the top recruiter in the Northeast, top recruiter in the country, is voted by 247 Sports. Come on, Jimmy. You got to be on this stuff. When did if that happen? You got to be on the Taylor Swift. That happened yesterday. If you're not on top of the Taylor Swift updates, Jimmy, I want you on top of the important stuff, like the new Syracuse I, coach is going to crush know, I was, Jersey. I wasn't going to bring that up since, you know, we're having a nice conversation, but I did, <laughs> I did, okay. I did, I was very critical of the three hour Taylor Swift show that you guys gave us during the Jets Chiefs game. How, how many I minutes see, of Taylor Swift? Too many, too many, how many? too many. I don't what, need to see, what, I don't need to see her after Pacheco scores a touchdown. What, what, what'd you miss in the broadcast? It wasn't what I missed. Here's, this yeah. is my rule for a broadcast. This is my rule for a broadcast. Your, this is your rule. My rule. Don't right. annoy me. That got annoying. <laughs> it's very, that's it. I've said this on this podcast a million times. Don't annoy me. That right. got annoying. Can, can and I will you, say this. Go ahead. Go? No, no, you're good. You're good. No other, no other telecast that had her did as much Taylor Swift stuff as you guys. Uh, you're close on that. You're, you're close. You're close on that. If you go back and see how much Taylor was in the show, remember, remember where it was. She was not a part of the story. She showed up as a surprise the game the week before. And now she's in New York with like a whole celebrity, a whole um, Access Hollywood box of celebrities there. And they all showed up for a game. So so remember this. One, it's entertainment. Two, it's prime time. Three, it didn't take away from one replay of anything about the game. And here's here's the philosophy I approached it with. We have 20 million loyal viewers every week for Sunday Night Football. It's a lot. It's the most in primetime TV. Don't piss them off. Don't take away from those folks. However, you have, and the ratings proved it, you have a few million people who don't watch your show on a regular basis who are coming in. So if you have a group of eight that goes to dinner and a couple of people come to join you, make them feel welcome. So we showed probably the most famous person in America a few times during the show. Didn't take away from any replay, any XO comment, anything about any of the players in the game. So that, got that's an, the bottom it, line of it. But it got annoying. When you came on and intro <laughs> the game and you said, hi, Swifties, yeah. that was cute. That right. was good. No issue. Okay. But then we're throwing it to Melissa Stark, and I'm getting updates on Taylor Swift and Aaron Rodgers, who wasn't even playing. You're showing her after the Pacheco touchdown. You're showing me Cornelius Street at some – and the game was a close game. I don't know wait, how – Wait, 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 wait. We showed we – should, Jimmy, we showed a street going to break. Right, yeah, it got it got and, annoying, and, and we show annoying. we show we show parts of every city at every place going to break. Sometimes they're historic. Sometimes it's a little wink and a nod. Sometimes the music matches it. Right? It's right, but honestly, like you would let something she's that's not on a the player for five seconds annoy you. She's not. No, it was the cumulative. <laughs> it was the cumulative that annoyed me. By the end of it, I was like, "Oh my god, I got it. She's there. Okay, what are we doing here?" That right. you know, that's fine. There, there were a bunch of people thing. who loved. Well, here's what you have to acknowledge: there were a bunch of people who appreciated it and enjoyed it. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But so, so this is broadcast. Luckily, I have a column, and I get to write right. that I was annoyed. So, so this, this is broadcast, and, and hundreds of friends of my daughter 
who were watching the game were like, that was really cool that you guys did that. So this is broadcasting. You're trying to reach a broad audience, right? And little little bits that don't take away from anything that happens on the football field, that's going to welcome your audience. Don't you want to grow the audience overall? I I get if she's there, she needs to be acknowledged. It was the it was the entire it was the total it was too much it got to be too much you and went, I stand, you went in against it didn't you no because i wasn't expecting her <laughs> to get because when fox did it the week before now they didn't know they knew i think like two hours beforehand she was going to be correct there. they correct. showed her like twice oh it wasn't absolutely not go they back and her, watch they didn't show I, her twice jimmy they, they did not twice. It was not a constant we, theme of the game, right? They had they had a finder. They were at that point. It was a little bit different story. The next week, right. did it blow up in media? I don't. I mean, I'm sure it did because <laughs> I think a lot of it too was the fact that it was the Jets in New York, and every everyone. It was just everything was over the top. It was like just show me, calm down with Taylor Swift. You're a New Yorker. You know, everything's over the top. Come Here's on. what I know. I know. Yeah, I'm a New Yorker. I know the Jets are an embarrassment. Let's not let's <laughs> relax with the Jets. There you go. Relax. And you know what? That, that, that's a, that, that was one of the better games they played. I know. But right? Can you believe, can you believe the Jets beat the Eagles? Like that to me is the yeah. most stunning thing of the whole entire NFL season right there. It, it, the Jets beat the Eagles. They're only it was one of those 10 seconds. You look at the schedule and go, wow, one lot, one lot. Oh, that loss was to the Jets, and and the Crazy. Jets the Jets played well that game. Remember, they couldn't right. get into the red zone and score in that right. game. That's a, that's such a good defense that the Jets have. That's the the shame of this season here a little bit is that they couldn't piece it together. And I don't think it's just Zach. I, I Zach struggled. No, no it's doubt. not. No, there not a lot of help. There was not a lot of help there. The offensive line was a problem. It has remained a problem. He hasn't been able to turn the ball, turn it, hand the ball. Excuse me. To two good backs in Hall and Cook, the receivers have not been winning downfield, and it was a cumulative effect. I, I would, I'm, I think Chris has me convinced of this, and I agree. I, I think, I think Zach Wilson goes somewhere else and plays well. I think he definitely goes somewhere else. I could see him being maybe like a serviceable backup. Ooh. But you hit, you hit on it though. How Brees Hall doesn't get twenty five carries a game blows my mind. Away. Blows my mind away. Blows it my yeah. mind away. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, the off the offensive so, line has not been like road grading people, and it's not built like that. And they've had all the changes. They had, you know, as many starters as any well, he, offensive line he's, until a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, in the quarter, and he's not protected by that offensive line at all. He, exactly. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. Jimmy, he's more than a serviceable backup. I'm not saying okay. he's going to be a Pro Bowl quarterback, but that right. could be a story similar to Geno Smith or Josh Dobbs. Guy goes away a couple of years, he backs up somewhere, and all of a sudden it becomes a, a pretty good quarterback. His arm talent is top level everybody you're around says that their assessment of them and i i I just i just feel bad that this whole season you know was four snaps to the jets yeah and and a taylor swift appearance for you well let's okay so let's end it on this since we went there yeah so she shows up in green bay sunday what should i expect i i think she'll be in the booth for the entire show we'll put her on headset for the whole three hours Collinsworth Here, will say, "There's the gal." And we'll do the whole thing for three. No, here's what here's I'll, what's going to go here's what's going to annoy me. If I get updates yeah. on like you know, the ear is tore and yeah. how she spent Thanksgiving with Travis Kelsey and <laughs> you know what's going on the with concerts her and, in South yeah. America, the whole and deal. I don't get unders at twenty nine and nine in primetime games, I'm going to be that's going to set me off. I've got it. I'm going to invite her to the booth and say, Taylor. Yeah. Can you just yeah. come on and say, Mike, do you know that the unders have been awful in primetime games this year? Then you'd be no, happy. The awfuls have been excellent in primetime games. Oh, the, yeah, excellent. That, yes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The total. So, yeah. if, if we do that, will that make you happy? Make it, maybe she could write a song about how great betting unders <laughs> are. Like, give me something. Give me something on the unders, and then I don't care about Taylor Swift. So do you, you know do we know? It's holiday season. Well, well, let me, this is a serious question. Do you, yeah. like, do you start fishing around? Like, is she going to be there? Is she going to show up? No, I don't. I don't invest any of my time into the is she going to show up? At some point, our folks usually end up finding out. Usually, it's closer to the game because security and other stuff, and 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 then you go from there. So I, I do. I, I don't. I, I, I I'm sorry. I will say that yeah. is one thing I would like to see. That is something I'd like to see covered. Is I, what I'm fascinated by is she's in that booth. She's got to get in and out of that booth. 
what, is she just flanked by bodyguards? Are there people? How is she like when they show her walking in the stadium? I'm like, how is she's not getting bombarded? Like what they must have. Maybe she just has perfect security. But the logistics would fascinate me about how the, the logistics. The logistics yeah. of, of celebrity movement is, is a fascinating deal. I've seen it. Yes. And I, I, I see it at the Olympics sometimes. We have dignitaries and stuff like that, right? It's, yeah, yeah. it's really fascinating. And most of it is not known for that exact purpose, right? So you right, just kind of right. try to observe around, okay, this person this person talking into their wrist must be <laughs> must be security of some sort. Yeah. But no, it, it's fascinating. I'm sure that you go to a road game and then it becomes a whole other level of that so yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad you're looking forward to it it's it's uh, something that you get to look forward to on sunday night and we'll see if listen I, I regardless of anything you guys have a nice few weeks here to wrap up the season kc yeah. at green bay philly at dallas baltimore jacksonville you get lucky because they have patriots denver on sunday night but that's going to be nfl network not you guys right right christmas eve that's right so you right. get out of a terrible game patriots on prime time three weeks in a row is going to be a little bit of an issue let's see and then you have uh you have the uh bills and chargers yeah. peacock only that's going to be i think that's going to be a great peacock game to, only. yeah peacock it, only it, it's it, it's probably gonna be a desperation game for buffalo which would be pretty yeah, interesting absolutely. as well and herbert herbert and josh allen are two of the quarterbacks you didn't mention herbert before but right. he's one of the guys in that group for me. And then, uh, you know, then we have Green Bay, Minnesota to wrap up week 17. Yeah. And then, you know, the last game of the year, game 272 of the regular season always has some meaning. So it's one of those where you don't know where you're going to be and it'll be fun. And yeah. then you jump into a couple of weeks of the playoffs. So yeah. it's good, I'm, I'm good, looking, time, good time of the year. I'm looking forward to every one of those games. That's, that's a good job. And you're a cool. class act for coming on after I, I, Ripped you guys for the Taylor Swift stuff, so I appreciate it's okay. that. Really nice I, 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 I love getting to do it because because I know Jimmy that you're just a fan at heart, and that's okay. It's, that's that's it, exactly what it is. It takes me back to Queens when I could spar with my family over something. So why I not? It's fun. All, all 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 good hearted arguments of disagreement are uh, are enjoyable, and that's usually what happens in the holidays, right? You get right, around the table, right. you, you you can civilly disagree. See, we can do it, right? And when I get around the table with my family, it's the same yeah. thing as when I'm watching you guys. Don't annoy me. That's the only rule. <laughs> don't annoy me. And we're good. Why don't you change your X handle to add don't yeah. annoy me? Yeah, that's good. That's, appreciate it. Enjoy this week, Casey at Green Bay and the, and the rest of the season. Thanks, Mike. You got it, Jimmy. Happy holidays. Right. Talk to you soon. You too. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Joining me now, as he does every week from WFAN Radio in New York, SNY TV in New York. My buddy Salicata, Sal, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, it was actually okay. Uh, not bad, which was nice. No travel, no looking at houses this weekend. Uh, not a bad Thanksgiving. I, I like how we're always in shock when it's tonight. I'm like, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good, it was a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right, actually, There's not no really much to complain about. Huh? Yeah, no fighting. I had a great Thanksgiving with the wagers. Oh, it was so great. It was one of the. Oh, it was God. just phenomenal. I I forgot that part, right? And you're and meanwhile, I'm taking it on the chin, and I'm getting a text from you. I'm on such, I'm on fire. I'm having the greatest week of my life with the betting. I'm uh, having the greatest NFL season of my life, thanks to discovering the joy of betting unders. But what, what happened on Thanksgiving was I never ever bet wacky player parlays. I rarely bet game parlays. I like to just bet straight up. Spread total, team totals. That's what I like. But I went on a draft king, and I so and I didn't love the games on Thanksgiving. Did not love the games with the lines. Fucking when I went on DraftKings Thanksgiving morning, I saw like 33% profit boost on player touchdown parlay. So like, you know what? I'll do this for shits and giggles because there's only three games, and I'll pick one player from each game just to keep my interest and have some fun. And I had Laporta for the Lions. He got a touchdown. Brandon Cooks for the Cowboys. He got a touchdown. When that happened, I knew I was good because I had McCaffrey in the night game. And it was like 10 to win 120 or something like that. And uh, I also, went, once the Lions lost, I loaded up on the Cowboys because I figured both home teams are not losing at home on Thanksgiving. See, that's something I would do, and you would shoot me down. What does one have to do with the other? No, you bet. No, no, you bet. 
crazy amounts, crazy wow. parlays, crazy teasers. All I bet was Dallas minus 13. That was it. Straight no, up. No, but because you said you didn't think two teams at home would lose. Like, I love that logic. I do that in the playoffs. Oh, well, two home teams have already won this weekend. A road team's got to win at some point. Like, that's stupid, but that's my logic sometimes. Well, but also, I did think Dallas. Yeah. I was going to bet Dallas regardless. But I was just proud of myself because at 12.15 on Thanksgiving, 15 minutes before the Lions and Packers started, I texted Gennaro, my buddy Gennaro, and I said, I got a funny feeling about the Packers covering today, but my bet on that game is over 27 points for the Lions. What makes me nervous more than anything is every single better alive loves the Lions. When that yeah. happens, it's a problem. Yeah. So well, I, I'm, I'm I, with you. I had over 27 for the Lions. I didn't have the side. So I lost that, and then I knew I was going to bet Dallas, but once that lost, I said, Dallas will kick their ass. So. Yeah, I like it. I unfortunately had the Lions. It sent me in a way tailspin that I'm still yet to dig out of. I, I, My teaser, my Turkey Day teaser got blown up right out of the gate. I doubled down by betting the Lions live in-game, and then I was like, all right, well, I need another Turkey Day teaser. So I took the Cowboys and the over, and then I had the – which hit, and then I had the Seahawks plus 17 and a half. I wake up to see the score in the middle of the night as I went to use the bathroom, and I see 31-13, and I'm trying to do the math with my eyes, and I can't see, and I do the calculator on the phone, 18, 18, 18. I'm like, this can't be because I was getting 17 and a half. So now I don't need to do the math anymore. 31-13, the difference is 18 points, not enough. I will say, in all seriousness, I do think the live betting is very dangerous. I it's think it's bad. very, very dangerous. I think you have to have a lot of discipline and not not you. I mean, the general you. I Everyone don't have it. discipline. Yeah, but it's helped in spots like that sometimes where a favorite that you believe in gets behind early. And then if you could get a good value on them or good odds, that, that's where it makes it work. I mean, I, mean, it, I mean, it's dangerous when you're in chase mode and you're in that tailspin. Yeah. That's what I mean. If you're using logic and sense, okay. But once you get where you're chasing, the live betting becomes a problem. Yeah, chasing in general is the worst thing you can do. Right. But yeah, especially live, right. you're like, oh, shit. Right. And it, you're right. If I didn't have the ability to bet that game live, I would have just lost my teaser, regroup, do another one. But because right. I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah, I doubled down. I, that's <laughs> and then Sunday. I I think Sunday my record was twelve and two. God, see, I had an awful Sunday because all the favorite. I can't stand when that happens. It was. It's been chalky. I'm not a chalk guy. Well, I, well here's what I had. Well, first of all, on Friday I had the under in the Jet Dolphin game because I know the Jets can't score. So I don't know why mm. anyone wouldn't bet under in every Jet game. They score six points a game, and then. I had the unders Sunday in Giants, Patriots, Falcons, Saints, which was a lucky one. And I had the under in the the one I had the most money on was the Steelers Bengals under. I lost the Broncos Browns under. You want to hear how I lost this one? No. Oh. So it was 37. I bought it. No, it was might have been 30. It was 37 and a half. It was 37 and a half. I bought it to 39 at under 39. Mm -hmm. The game was on 39. So I had to push going with like a minute left. And with a minute left, the Browns punted. No, excuse me. Excuse me. The Broncos punted. And the Browns got the ball at their own one yard line. Oh, God, I did see that. Safety. I did see that, yeah. I got to see what, what's... <laughs> let, me, what's the, let me see what time in the game. Oh, okay, I, I'm exaggerating. It was, two tw it was two minutes and 24 seconds left with the Still. safety. But at that point, you're thinking they're just running out the clock and whatever. Yeah, so that was my... But I, I had the uh, Eagles, which I got so lucky with the Eagles. I have one more question for you before we move on about the lines. So I lost on – I've been betting the, the Giants all year long for stupid reasons, but whatever. This week, 
I was like, there's no way a rookie quarterback is going to beat up a Bill Belichick defense. And the line made no sense to me at all. Uh, How in the world? But but we're going to have... The line made no sense to me either, but I think the opposite way. Right. So that's what I'm asking you. Like, right. how? Because a lot of times I'm like, this line makes no sense. And right. I get sucked in. And then it's like, oh, well, they sucked me in with, with the line trying to get you to bite on the Giants. So I see that line and I think this makes the, like, if you were to ask me what that game should be, it should have been a pick them at best, Patriots and, and Giants. I agree. How the fuck were the Patriots minus three and a half? It went up to on my site minus four and a half. Before it that was, came off. How? So the line that I saw on DraftKings was four and a half. I bought it to five because I get nervous. And I pounded the Giants because because the line made no sense. Not because the line made well, no. I agree with you. I agree with you a hundred percent. It should have been a pick. The game should have been a pick. There's no doubt about it. Right. But I bet the Giants, because I know that. The Giants Mac can't. Jones. The Giants can't score. Okay, this bullshit with Tommy DeVito and everyone thinking it's funny that he's Italian. What the Giants can't score. He stinks, and the Giants can't score, and the Patriots can't score. Mac Jones might be the worst quarterback in the NFL. So if you have is. two, so if you have two teams that can't score, why would you not take five points? Yeah, and it's just something that I didn't really give much thought to, other than belief in Bill and the defense going against the Giants team who I know can't score. And by the way, they did turn the ball over three times and still should have tied the game and sent it to overtime. But like, I I just don't understand that line. And then to have it play out to common sense, common sense would tell you there's no way the Patriots should be four point favorites over anybody. So common sense would take the points. No, but here's why they were four and a half point favorites. One, Belichick. There's still some cachet with Belichick. Two, the Patriots still have some national appeal from when they were the Patriots. Mm, I so guess. you're in New York, so you know the. I think other, you know, the Giants are pathetic. Like they won the game, but they're pathetic on offense. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's just so, it was one of those weird ones where the line. Usually, I try not to get sucked into that, but the line was telling you to to the line was begging you to take the Giants. Usually when I do that, I get burnt, so I go the other way, and I get burnt. See, I didn't. I looked at it like neither team can score, so I'm going to take five points. That's, right. That was my whole – that was it. Yeah. I just want to read these stats because they're unbelievable. Monday night football games this year, the under is 13-1. and one. Wow. In primetime games – Monday night, Sunday night, Thursday night, the under is 29 and 9. And in since in Monday night football since 2019, so the last four seasons, unders 58, 28, and 1. That's incredible. Get on the under bandwagon. Do you think it's just because the quality of play sucks? Brady was right about that. Like quarterbacks, there are no good quarterbacks and quality of well, play think- overall. I think people like to bet overs. People like to bet overs. People want to watch the game and root for points. They don't want to root for the clock to run out. So right. I think you get a lot of people betting overs. Which makes the number go up, right? Right. And then I right. think, right. And then I think you have, yeah, what you said, the quarterbacks are terrible. Where you get burned sometimes with the unders is the refs when they call these ridiculous 15-yard <laughs> penalties. So... <laughs> Uh, that's 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 uh the college i know you don't follow the college but there's been wild stuff with the iowa football team with unders as well like their totals every week are like 25 26 27 i actually didn't watch the first quarter of the jet game because i was watching iowa nebraska to see if that game was going to go under 25 which i had that's the total for the game yes what did it end up as so listen to this so Iowa, Iowa. For, even when I remember, like Kirk Ferentz and Iowa, they, they they never scored a bunch back then. Now it's even worse. Right. So listen to this: Iowa plays Michigan Saturday in the Big Ten title game. Okay. Michigan is twenty-two point favorites. 
the total is 35. So, so they think it's going to be 30 to 30 to seven or something. They, the Iowa team total is six and a half. This is a team playing in a, in a, in a conference title game. And the bookmakers don't think they will score a touchdown. Now, why is the line only 22? Is their defense good, Iowa? Yes, their defense is excellent. That's why their totals okay. are always 25, 26. Yeah, they have a good defense. Right. They can't score. And Michigan has a very good defense. Like the Jets. Okay. Exactly. Where again, <laughs> you just you just got to be nervous for the defensive, you know, right. the fumbles and the defensive nonsense. Um, all right. So that's all I wanted to say about betting. What's going on with the house hunt? Everyone needs to, everyone always asks. So what is there? You didn't do it because it was Thanksgiving, I assume. Right. There was nothing available this week. Doesn't seem like there's going to be much available, you know, getting down to it here. I'm going to be decision time is coming. Like, do we have to rent, rent back our house, move, rent something else? Like, I just, I just want this to be over. Are you going this weekend? I don't believe so. I don't believe there's anything available or different that's out there yet. Here's what your problem is going to be, too. You know, in a couple of weeks, they start the the Saturday games with the NFL. You're going to you're going to miss those if you start house you know, on Saturdays. I'm glad you brought that up because as I was scrolling through the schedule, I was thinking of you last night. Are those those games have not been determined yet? Is that right? Actually, I'm or looking you- at it. It doesn't start. I don't know why. This is bizarre. It doesn't start till week 16. Week 16, which is the 23rd of December, the day before Christmas Eve. Wow. That's the, only t- it usually starts the week before, I feel like, because it's always that's my wife's birthday. Thought. The 19th. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. But I'm looking. Are those it's games the tw- set? Are they set or we flex on, games? On the 23rd, they're set. Bengals, Steelers at 430, and then the Bills, Chargers at 8 o'clock, and that Bills, Chargers game is a Peacock-only game. Okay. I, I, I'm Bills, not Chargers, though, is a good it's yeah. a good game. I'm probably not going to watch either of those. And then on the 17th, there's only, which is week 17, on the 30th, which is week 17, there's only one Saturday game, and it's at night, 8-15. It's a good game, Lions and Cowboys. So there's not a okay. ton. I think the reason there's not a ton of Saturday games maybe is because Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday. I don't know. Maybe that's what's screwing everything up. So whatever. Okay. I don't mind. Traditionally, I don't mind those Saturday games. I love you them. Know, a week before Christmas. Yeah. You know what I don't like? I don't like that it's week 13 in the NFL and there's six teams on a bye. The bye should be over by now. The bye yeah. should be from like week six to 12. That should be the buys. It's too late. Why is that? Is that because of the London schedule or the uh, Germany thing? Like, yeah, I, don't I think get that's, why. that's just how they schedule. Okay. And there's, and you know, the Patriots play in prime time three weeks in a row. The and there's no way to flex. How do we not flex that out? I can't watch Mac Jones or Billy Zappi anymore. Or Bailey, I think one game fuck will. Name. I think one game will be flexed out. So they play week 14. They play on Thursday night on Amazon. Patriots Steelers. I don't think that's going to. That can't be flexed because the 28 day window is is done. So they can't flex it. The week after, the Chiefs play the Patriots on Monday night. I do think. Based on what Mike North told me on the pod last week, they're going to flex that out and they're going to put in Eagle Seahawks because Eagle Seahawks right now is a 425 game in week 15, but it's not going to any part of the country because at 425 that week is Cowboys Bills. So Eagle Seahawks is getting buried. So to unbury it, they might flex it with Chiefs Patriots on Monday night. What about Giants Packers Monday night? Part of the doubleheader, I think. I think now with the Packers beating the Lions, it's not going to get flexed. And I guess maybe because of the, I was going to say Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito stuff, but it more because more because of uh, um, the Packers now that I bet they keep it because the only and, game, the only game they were going to be able to flex in was Jets Houston. Right. Because they, they both played do. the Meadowlands. Well, they right. can because they, well, they might because of Stroud. Right, the, Stroud, the, the 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 NFL fan is into Stroud. They're not into anyone on the Giants, Packers, or Jets. It's either Packers, Giants, big market, love in the Packers, you know, and, and the two history historic teams, or Stroud versus Tim. 
in Boyle. I mean, bro. Oh, but Stroud is better than any of the other options. And the tech, the All Texans right. are the Tex. If you take if you take Jets, Giants, Texans, Packers, the Texans are by far the most fun and watchable team. Well, and they have a chance to make the postseason. Where right. I don't, do the Packers? Are the Packers they, back in? Okay, they're alive. They're alive. They're alive. <clears throat> All right, let me change gears completely. You do not, I don't think you do. Do you use Spotify? Somebody texted me. Is there something going on with this shit? I got a text today. Do you use Spotify? No, I don't. I use Apple Music, and they go, oh, at least people that you're going to work with are younger. Well, am I old? Because I don't know what's. I know yeah. what it is. I don't use it. No. Okay, well, this isn't why I brought this up, but I'll just piggyback on that and tell you that when I worked at, not when I still work at SI, when we had an office, when SI had an office and we were in the office, I was like the oldest person there, of course. And all of the young people who worked with me, all my buddies who were younger, Chris Chavez, Dan Rappaport, they would mock me and make fun of me because I don't have Spotify. And I'm like, well, I use Apple Music. And I would get mine. Right. You had if you don't have Spotify, I guess you're a loser and you're old. Why? So we're okay, losers. Anyway. But anyway, but I bring it up because I don't have it. But today, every year at this time of year, and it launched today, they do the Spotify wrapped or unwrapped. I don't right. know if it's wrapped. Where they give you like the your most listened to artists and your most listened to podcasts. And I always get a little bummed out because everyone who has podcasts, they post it. And I get like to where I'm on it. So it's a little sad for me. Oh, okay. So that's what the significant is. Yeah. So you, like you if you have a Spotify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you have a Spotify account, you can go in there today and it'll say these are the five podcasts you listen to the most. So you know you All go right. so then I go on Instagram, right? And it's like and I go, let's say I follow Chris Long. It'll be like, oh Chris Long posts and then some guys like, oh, you know, Green light was my most. Or if you follow Travis Kelsey, they'll be like, "Oh, New Heights was the, you know." And then for me, it's like two people, and and people give a shit about this. And by the way, not only not well, I know that from I'm, a you know, yes, it's a little different story. But I also don't need to have Spotify tell me what my top five podcasts are. I know what I'm listening to. Well, oh, I know what. Wow. Like I'd be able to tell you the podcast that I listen to. Oh wow! I didn't realize that I listened to SI Media podcast with Jimmy Jimmy Trana every day. Like I know what I'm listening to. I know what's going to be on there. No? Well, it's, it's more of a thing. Like then you share it with other people because that's what we do in this day and age. You got to share right. everything. Right. But I'm saying okay. I get FOMO because I don't get a ton of like people saying like, oh, uh, you know, blah blah blah. Stop. You know, I'm a, sure you know you Apple do. Apple Music does it. They have a year in review for Apple Music. I didn't know that. I looked at it this morning. If I told you what my most listened to song was in 2023, you wouldn't even believe it. What? It's not even like it's ridiculous. But I couldn't believe that that was my most listened to song. What is it? Okay. <laughs> so my favorite Beatles song is Let It Be. Yeah. Okay. So Let It Be was my most listened to song of 2023, but not the Beatles. There's a live version that Paul McCartney did with Billy Joel at the last play at Shea that I was at and saw live. And that version was the song I listened to the most in 2023. Interesting. I got to listen to that. They have that on Apple Music? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you still Apple Music or you're Spotify now? No, I'm Apple Music. I don't okay, have a yeah. Spotify account. Yeah, all right. Me neither. It's all a ripoff, though. Like they charge like 15 bucks to listen to music each month. It's crazy. I'll tell you another thing to tie it into the house hunting budget is coming and a lot of this shit is going to get cut because apple music family icloud netflix peacock hbo dude it's just it's too much it's what's too, getting cut it's too much i gotta go over it but a lot of shit i already started to my wife's like what budget i go yeah budget like i think max might be getting cut netflix netflix is like netflix has to stay but but Max is tied in with your cable. Yeah, but like all that shit's got to get trimmed down. It's just there's too much going on. And I know it seems like, – and then I tell my wife this, and she starts telling me about, hey, I got a notice from you know the car or whatever that we have to re-up the automatic start. Should I do it? I go, what, what is it? She said $8 a month. I go, no. You guess what? You could do it old school. Throw a jacket on, go outside, start the car before you put the baby in there. That's $3.99. Uh, We're on a budget. Do you understand what a budget is? 
Like, at least with Netflix, you're getting something you can't pay for. With the car remote start, just go do it yourself. My favorite part about this is you're, you're bitching and complaining about $8 a month for the automatic starter. But you may have forgotten. You told me what you bet on your Thanksgiving bets. But wait, well, my wife doesn't know about that. Let's see. I'm confused about something. Yeah. You have to pay monthly for your automatic starter in your car? I don't know. I've never done it, but I guess it's like a, I did it when it was for free initially. But then I guess when that runs out, then you have to pay per month to have like whatever the services you could access your your keys and all. Like you could open and start your your car, remote start, all that stuff from uh, now, from the phone. Listen, there is nothing on the face of the earth I know less about than cars, but I have an automatic starter and I don't pay anything per month. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I didn't think that we had to pay for it either, but $8 a month to do something that you could just easily do yourself. Oh, but it's cold out. Yeah, that's what jackets are for. Like, go go put a jacket on and go start the car. It takes two seconds. I don't use the automatic start. I'm just saying, like, if you do that, uh-huh. again, it's not it's not just the eight bucks, but all right, eight bucks there. And then you subscribe to whatever, what the athletic, or you, you know, you you listen to uh a certain day, the Spotify or your Apple Music, right. you get, it just all adds up, dude. It's an and it just doesn't end. I don't disagree with you. I think you're a hundred percent correct. I'm with you a hundred thousand percent. But I'm blown away that you pay for the automatic starter. How well, about this? E- how about I this don't. email? Go ahead. No, I I told her. I said, oh, you want that for your birthday? I, I'll buy you a year subscription for your birthday, and then we'll call it even. She goes, hell no. I'm like, all right. Well, then we don't need it that badly. Husband of the year over here. Well, but, well, I mean, you know, for a whole year subscription, you love it that much? I'll get it for you for your birthday. Well, but and let me ask you this question, too. What, you said you don't use the automatic starter. Why not? You leave your house at like six in the morning. How come you don't use it? Because I don't think I I think after the year ran out, I never re-upped it on my car. I never so, used to use it anyway. It's just fucking, you know why? Because they got to sign into the account. And guess what? I don't know what the sign in is. So once I couldn't sign in and like I had to reset my phone and I just gave up on it. I don't care. I don't what kind of ridiculous automatic start? This is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. You've got to sign in, pay $8 a month. I don't understand what's going the on. App. There's an app on the phone. No, there's no download. app. There's no yeah. app to use. An audio. There is with me. There what is with you, I, What the yeah. f- Fuck do you it's have? an app through the phone that you got to sign in and start your car and you could lock the door. You don't have on your it. you don't have on your or key on your key no. fob thing. No. <laughs> I don't understand I what is easy. going on. You blew I my mind it. away with this one. <laughs> I'll say this about listen to this because you mentioned all these things that add up and then you you drop the athletic. So I have a New York New York Times slash athletic subscription. That I signed up for, I don't, and I don't remember what mm-hmm. I was paying, but it wasn't much. I got an email last week. Your discounted subscription rate has come to an end as of 9-11-23. Your new rate is $25 every 28 days. Oh, are, are you kidding 25 me? 25 bucks a month? Goodbye, New York Times. Goodbye, The Athletic. Goodbye. That's what I mean, dude. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's all. It, it adds up. I, I just can't justify it anymore. I got to trim the fat. That's what I'm telling my wife. Trim the fat. Oh. Or just, you know, do better with the wagers. And yeah. Well, that's a different story. Here's what you tell trim too. That's gonna get tell it. Her, After the chase, what, then I'm going to cut. After I chase it, then I'm going to cut it out. <laughs> here's, what, here's what you tell your wife. You say, honey, listen, you want the automatic starter? I'm going to bet a couple on this Sunday. We'll get you the automatic starter. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you tell her yeah. alright Sal take All it right. easy we'll see you next week I'll talk to you later alright my many thanks to Mike Tirico great sport appreciated having him on my thanks to Sal Licata my thanks to you guys for listening if you missed any recent episodes of SI Media with Jimmy Trainer, check them out in the archives we had Mike North the Senior Vice President of Broadcast Planning for the NFL on last week got into a lot of schedule stuff Good stuff if you're a hardcore NFL fan. Ian Eagle was on the pod two weeks ago. RG3, Peter Schrager, Bill Simmons, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, 
Dan Patrick, all recent guests on SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. So go into the archives, check out those interviews, subscribe to the podcast, leave a review on Apple. All right, that wraps it up for this week. We'll see you next week. Stay safe and take care.